It's inside a uh, captured T-80 Russian tank that the Ukrainian army has repaired. This week. And uh, it's going to use against them. On KSL Plus. This is not a video game where you can reset, get an extra life. They're headed off to war. Uh, they're headed to the Eastern Front. One Utah veteran's mission to Ukraine. Every time that we've gone back there, we've been able to just take this road here. To support refugees. It's going to be challenging, but I think they will be able to. And uh, show Ukrainians that Americans care. To hold on and, again, in the long run, win. I'm Matt Rascone, and this is KSL TV's digital only news show and podcast. And this week, we follow the story of Quan Wen a former refugee from Vietnam, a U.S. Marine veteran living in Kaysville, and a man now on a mission to help the people of Ukraine. I've always understood how horrible life is as a refugee. I mean, More than 40 life. years ago, as a young boy, Quan Nguyen fled Vietnam with his family. The second one was a lot better. I, they spent time in a couple of refugee camps. We lost our country uh, to communism, and uh, my dad uh, decided to get us out of there, so I was a refugee. Pretty much got everything that you need, tourniquet, bandages. My colleague Jed Bull has interviewed Quan several times over the last couple of months. Antibiotics, uh, that's a huge one. Following his journey, to help the people of the last Ukraine. Couple days of attack is obviously burdens. Here's part of Jed's conversation with Quan at the end of what turned into a two-month humanitarian mission to Ukraine. What do you think was the was the most valuable thing that you were able to do to help the, the Ukrainian people? Why was it important for you to be there? I think um, I I don't think it was necessarily the logistics uh, because obviously. The Red Cross, other organizations can do it at scale. I think it was more, at least what I got was the fact that America cared. That was uh, what I thought was important for the people of Ukraine was to see that Americans cared and they would ask me, oh, are you getting paid for this? Nope. I'm just volunteering here just like a lot of other Americans, a lot of other Europeans. Uh, I think that was the big takeaway was the fact that uh, Ukrainians didn't think that they were there by themselves because I think at first they obviously thought they burns. were. Again, water filters, the rockets hit the uh, utilities, obviously that goes down. As a Marine, Nguyen served in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan and has skills to help out. Spent 10 years overseas, uh, so uh, yeah, I'm pretty used to it. He's not naive about what he's getting into and he has a plan. I'm not going to the front lines. I think that's the, the difference. A fellow Marine veteran living in Western Ukraine has set up a safe house to help those who are fleeing with a place to stay, critical supplies, and transportation. We can't help everybody, but uh, just knowing that you, you were able to be part of somebody's um, journey, helping them escape, who knows? Uh, you know, that person could be the person that uh, cures cancer. His wife, Amy, was supportive immediately. Um, I know who he is and his heart, and yeah, I am beyond proud of him for taking a stand um, against evil. Jed spoke to Quan several more times while he was overseas, on the ground getting a first-hand look at what Ukrainians were going through and the help they need. They're strong. They love their country. After only one day in Ukraine, Quan Nguyen can tell Ukrainians are resilient. Most refugees left loved ones behind, the elderly and those who can fight. Sometimes it's just heartbreaking just thinking about Nguyen talked to me from the quiet streets of Lviv, where many Ukrainians passed before going to the Polish border. Nguyen was born in Vietnam and lived in refugee camps before coming to the U.S. as a kid. So the plight of these refugees hits home. His focus? 
take care of the people that are coming through, uh, getting the medical supplies out to the front lines and seeing how much more we can uh, buy locally or get people who are coming in from Poland uh, to buy it for us. His fellow Marine had already opened his home for refugees. Uh, refugees, women, children staying there. Uh, they brought in their pets, etc. So they're, uh, you know, they get a chance to shower. They get a chance to rest. Uh, they may stay here for a day or two. They're fed. Um, and then they go on their way. On the surface, he says, you cannot tell the country is under siege in Lviv. My main mission and our main mission is humanitarian. I'm not going to the front line, so I'm not focused on that. I'm keeping an, a wary eye on that because that's my background. And uh, that does help. So far, Kwan Nguyen and his friend have helped 30 families escape Ukraine, mostly women and children. He feels that they are making a difference and that they are safe from the war, at least for now. It definitely does feel a little bit more dangerous. But Kwan Nguyen tells me the Russian shelling and assaults are still a safe distance from Lviv. He spoke to me from the quiet city center. The only time that it is a little bit frantic, as I mentioned before, is when you have the uh, air sirens. Air raid sirens, more common now than a week ago, adding to a sense of impending trouble among the people. They hope that something doesn't happen, but they're also planning. The Marine veterans provide shelter for refugees who have left Kyiv, Lutsk, and other cities under attack. They get some peace and quality, especially for the, uh, uh, the kids. Uh, we've got some toys for them to play with. Uh, so that's basically what we've been able to do. They give the Ukrainian families healthy food, a bed, and a way to the border. They celebrated a birthday with one woman whose family leaves her homeland tomorrow. The Marine veterans signed a lease on another house yesterday so they can double the number of families they help. As for the resolve of the Ukrainians who have stayed to fight... They're not going anywhere. This is their home. This is, this is it. When Ukrainian President Zelensky addressed American lawmakers... It seemed like afterward there was definitely a bump of energy. Um, but, you know, everybody that you talk to, they, they still wish for victory. Uh, they still wish for peace. Safe for now in Lviv, but for how long? Worst case scenario, yes, we would leave. We just don't know when. You know, we'd like to try to stay here as, as long as possible because we are able to have a lot of impact. And this is uh, okay, what, what age group is this? Uh, from the first uh, to There's definitely heightened sense, and you see a lot of soldiers walking around. You see a lot of civilians walking around with guns. Task Force 824 operates a safe house in Lviv for families fleeing the fighting. Those refugees told them about loved ones left behind in Kyiv who still needed help. I'm leaving my parents behind, they're too old. Is there somebody that can check up on them to see that they've got medication, groceries? So Nguyen went to Kyiv. I went to the grocery store today, bought a bunch of groceries and um, gave it to them. The Russians have intensified the assault on Kyiv. Here's Nguyen taping a window in anticipation of flying shrapnel. But you cannot always tell the city is under siege until the sirens sound. Okay, we just had a uh, air raid siren, so I'm gonna kind of pay attention to what's going on. Um, I'm gonna actually move away from the windows and turn off. He turned out the lights and headed for the bathroom. Close the door. Um, well, lately, it's definitely been a lot more. Despite intensifying warfare, Nguyen says the Ukrainian people are optimistic they can repel the Russians. They're going back on the offensive. They're taking some towns back. Uh, it, it should be interesting to see what happens in the next couple of weeks. So we'll, I'll play it by ear. Nguyen says recent pledges of arms support from the international community has given new strength to the resistance. You can feel the energy. Uh, definitely after getting you know, the commitment from the international community to get the arms and just the success of uh, their military, they're definitely uh, emboldened, no doubt about that. So you were able to really help people, you were helping with transportation, yep. helping people get from one place to another. Yeah. You were helping with those um, 
the uh, the the water purification yep. pads. That was that was talk about. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I knew that we were going to Bucha. I didn't know what was needed. I mean, I had an idea based on my experience in war uh, zones. So I packed everything that I had and. Uh, you know, we're driving around. I mean, obviously, we were handing out medical equipment, uh, whatnot, and food because definitely we uh, there was a lack of food there. The Russians had destroyed the infrastructure, so no electricity. And then we were driving down this, uh, I guess, like the small street, and then off to the corner, like literally a small little alleyway. You could see, uh, and I think it was the picture where it was the water boiling, and we kind of stopped you know, backtracked and then just kind of went out and were hoping to talk to the people and, you know, they came out of hiding and uh, uh, they offered us uh, tea uh, and coffee. And then we kind of, you know, we were caught up in the hospitality and then um, it got brought up. Oh yeah, you know, uh, we have to boil water. Uh, we don't have running water anymore. Uh, we've been collecting rainwater. Some people have been, um, you know, draining the, uh, the water from the battery and then it just, uh, you know, besides all the other stuff that I had, it's like, oh my gosh, I've got water filters. Let me give it to you. And it was just perfect. I mean, it's just, uh, and I think that's the, um, that's the other takeaway is you never know, you know, in your, literally in your toolkit, what they might need. But if you just go out there and talk to them and uh, try to connect uh, everybody together. So yeah, that, that was amazing. This has been the most destruction that I have seen. That and the senseless killing of so many Ukrainians weighed heavily on Kwan Wen's mind as he toured Bucha with other volunteers. Today's definitely been a tougher day uh, just because you know that the areas that you drove through, the bodies were there. Streets are strewn with civilian vehicles riddled with bullets. It was a family just trying to escape during one of the, uh, I guess, one of the times where they said, you know, people could evacuate and uh, they get shot at. There are also disabled tanks left by retreating Russian troops. The infrastructure was pretty much tore, uh, tore up by the, uh, the Russian troops. Uh, so I figured that I at least had these uh, drinking straws. He handed out water purification pens donated by friends in Utah. What better place than, uh, than Bucha where they, you know, no electricity, no, uh, no running water. At the same time, the Ukrainians are trying to determine what atrocities were committed. He says war crimes investigators and prosecutors are interviewing people and taking pictures. But that's what stood out for me was just how many teams um, that were out there investigating and how important it is to the Ukrainian people that these war crimes are investigated, documented. Nguyen and several friends are still helping families flee areas under attack, meeting with a group of regional leaders to find out how they can help the most. You see it just uh, shock, horror, and uh, just hoping that uh, those uh, perpetrators are eventually held responsible by the International uh, Criminal Court. So you ended up spending nearly two months there. Mm -hmm. How did you have so much to give? Yeah, I think it goes back, uh, well, two things. Um, you guys know that uh, my family and I came from Vietnam. We escaped uh, after the Vietnam uh, war after um, Saigon fell to communists. Um, and the first time we didn't make it out, uh, our fishing boat, literally the boat died. So we were stranded out there for a couple weeks. So we were rationing water, uh, but uh, we were in refugee camps almost for about a year. And the refugee camps that we were in were just horrible conditions. Uh, again, no running water, uh, you know, I think uh, at the time, uh, the Malaysian government was doing its best what it, uh, with what it could. So that was, that was definitely a huge driving point for me through all my life is that uh, if, you know, I, I've, I've always had a special place for refugees regardless of their political, religious background because I've gone through it. And being in a refugee camp, you've got uh, uh, rampant disease, crime, et cetera, it sucks. And then the other part is, um, from the military side, uh, I mean, I, I knew I wanted to help, but what kept me going was how therapeutic it ended up being for me. I didn't realize it was, uh, 
you know, when I think about my experiences uh, in uniform and out of uniform, I'd have to say that uh, what I've been doing is just, at least this part of my life, maybe had you talked to me uh, in my, uh, <laughs> while I was in uniform, it would have been different. But uh, yeah, it's definitely uh, very therapeutic as, uh, as a combat veteran, being able to go back there and help people. Uh, and you, you almost feel what they're going through because, you know, I don't have a weapon. I'm going in there just like what I have. Okay, I had a pocket knife and I guess whatever knife I could pick up. And I, I, I guess I could have picked up a weapon uh, uh, somewhere. But, uh, you know, you feel, I don't want to say defenseless, but you feel what they're going through is like they, they somewhat don't have any control. So, I mean, that's, that's where I got my energy from. When Kwan Nguyen first arrived in Ukraine, he was only focused on providing humanitarian aid raised with his wife and fellow veterans through his organization, TF824.org. But due to the dire circumstances, he's now also helping troops. In order to stop the, the killing of innocent Ukrainians, Ukraine has to win, period. For that reason, Kwan Nguyen recently helped train Ukrainian troops headed to defend the Eastern Front against the Russians. In the course of his humanitarian work, the Ukrainians discovered that Wen's experience as a Marine could be helpful. He was asked to assess some of their tactics. People are still dying. So if there's anything that I could do while still maintaining my mission to help that, um, then I will. The Ukrainians wanted suggestions. I walked away basically telling them, there's nothing for me to, uh, no advice for me to give to you. Their tactics are sound, he says, as long as they have the weapons systems they need. Minus the language barrier, I thought I was in some training back in the U.S. The Ukrainians also using weapons seized from the Russians. Inside a uh, captured T-80 Russian tank that the Ukrainian army has repaired and uh, it's going to use against them. Consequences are life and death. This is not a video game where you can reset, get an extra life. This is serious business, but yeah, they're, they're headed off to war. Uh, they're headed to the Eastern Front. And, and you want to go back. Why, why is a return trip important? I think the first time around, I knew that I, I had an idea of what I thought I could do, what they needed. Um, and that trip was an eye-opener for me. It validated some things. It, uh, uh, now I have an idea of what needs to be done, uh, things that could be done uh, a lot better. Uh, so that's the reason for going back. And there's still gonna be a, a you know, ongoing need no matter what. Uh, even, let's say, uh, again, like I said, when they win, not if, um, there's gonna be the reverse influx of displaced uh, Ukrainians coming back uh, from wherever they're at, whether it's somewhere in the EU, whatnot, uh, back into Ukraine. And we've already seen this. Uh, there, there's still a lot to be done, and especially with the reconstruction, um, there's a lot of uh, things that we could do. That does it for us this week here on KSL Plus. I'm Matt Rascone. We'll see you again next week.